Hello and welcome to another lesson in our All Saints series, which is a part of our Holy Day of Obligation series. And this is, of course, SD Kaysen Courses. You can check us out at courses.sdkaysen.com. And we're going to start, as always, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So today we're talking about Eastern Christianity and how they celebrated All Saints Day throughout history. The Eastern Orthodox Church, which, of, which is of course officially the Orthodox Catholic Church, also called the Greek Orthodox Church. We're going to go back. Uh, following the Byzantine tradition, commemorates All Saints collectively on the Sunday after Pentecost, which is called All Saints Sunday. And the Byzantine tradition, let's just look it up real quick. The Byzantine tradition, let's see if we can find it. No, nope, we're going to look it up like this. Here we go. And the Byzantine Rite, also known as the Greek Rite or the Rite of Constantinople, is a liturgical rite that is identified with a wide range of cultural, devotion, devotional, and canonical practices that developed in the Eastern Christian Church of Constantinople. So that's what the Byzantine tradition is. It's the tradition that grew up with Greek-speaking languages around the eastern part of the Roman Empire. Moving on, by 411, the East Syrians kept the Chaldean calendar with a commemoratio confessorum, celebrated on the Friday after Easter. The 74th homily of St. John Chrysostom from the late 4th or early 5th century marks the observance of a feast of all the martyrs on the first Sunday after Pentecost. And John Chrysostom was an important early church father, who served as Archbishop of Constantinople. He is known for preaching and public speaking, his denunciation of abuse of authority by both ecclesiastical and political leaders. He is very famous in the Eastern churches. Some scholars place the location where this sermon was delivered as Constantinople, which would make sense because that is where St. John Chrysostom resided. The Feast of All Saints achieved greater prominence in the 9th century in the reign of Byzantine Emperor Leo IV the Wise, which was around 866 to 911. And Leo IV the Wise, also known as Leo the Wise, was Byzantine Emperor from 886 to 912, the second ruler of the Macedonian dynasty. He was very well read, leading to his epithet. During his reign, the renaissance of letters begun by his predecessor Basil I continued, but the empire also saw several military issues during this time. His wife, Empress Theophano lived a devout life and after her death, miracles occurred. Her husband built a church for her relics and intended to name it to her. He was discouraged to do so by local bishops and instead dedicated to all saints. According to tradition, it was Leo who expanded the feast from a commemoration of all martyrs to a general commemoration of all saints, whether martyrs or not. And again, we're going to look up martyrs because martyrs are people who suffer persecution and death for advocating or refusing to renounce their faith. In this instance, we're talking about the Christian faith. We're talking about Jesus Christ. So the martyrs were the people who died because they refused to renounce Christ. But All Saints Day commemorates everyone who is in heaven, not just those who were martyrs. In the beginning, it was specifically for all martyrs. Moving on, the, the Sunday of All Saints marks the close of the Paschal season, which is, of course, um, the cycle of movable feasts built around Easter. So the Paschal season is the Easter season. To the normal Sunday services are added special scriptural readings and hymns to all the saints, known or unknown, from the, Pen the Pentecostarion. And the Pentecostarion is a liturgical book used by the Eastern Orthodox and Byzantine Catholic churches during the Paschal season. In the late spring, the Sunday following Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after Easter, is set aside as a commemoration of a locally venerated of all locally venerated saints, such as All Saints of America, All Saints of Mount Athos, and so on. The third Sunday after Pentecost may be observed 
for even more localized saints, such as all saints of St. Peterburgs, St. Petersburg, or for saints of a particular type, such as new martyrs of the Tur Turkish yoke. And the persecution of Christians uh, is historically traced to many different places, including Turkey. So they can celebrate specifically these Turkish martyrs on the uh, third Sunday after Pentecost, if they would like to do that. In addition to the Mondays mentioned above, Saturdays throughout the year are days for general commemoration of all saints and special hymns to all saints are chanted from the O Toy Kos. Now, I might be saying that wrong, but I'm doing my best with the pronunciation. All right. The book Octoikos is a liturgical book containing a repertoire of hymns ordered in eight parts according to eight Echoi, originally created in the monastery of Stuodios during the 9th century as a hymnal complete with musical notation. It is still used in many rites of Eastern Christianity. So they use this book to sing special hymns to all the saints. And we're going to talk a little bit about Lebanon and the East Syriac tradition. The celebration of 1st of November in Lebanon as a holiday reflects the influence of Western Catholic orders present in Lebanon and is not Maronite in origin. And Maronites are the Eastern Catholics who reside in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Levant. And it is considered, you know, it's called the Maronite Church. And their largest concentration has traditionally resided near Mount Lebanon in modern Lebanon. So the 1st November date is a is something that came from the influence of western catholics not from maronites however the traditional maronite feast equivalent to the honor of all saints in their litur liturgical calendar is one of three sundays in preparation for lent called the sunday of the righteous and the just the following sunday is the sunday of the faithfully departed similar to all souls day in western calendar we're going to talk a little bit about the east syriac tradition in East Syriac tradition, the All Saints Day celebration falls on the first Friday after Resurrection Sunday. And let's just look up the East Syriac tradition to explain a little bit more about them. The East Syriac Rite, or East Syrian Rite, also called the Edessian Rite, Assyrian Rite, Persian Rite, Chaldean Rite, it's, it's got many different names. It's an Eastern Christian liturgical rite that employs the divine liturgy of Saints Adai and Mari and utilizes the East Syriac dialect as its liturgical language. So it's different from the Western Rite and it's different from the Byzantine Rite and East Syriacs uh, or Chaldeans can be Catholics or they could be not connected to, you know, the Pope in Rome, but they would still be considered, you know, East Syriac Christians. So we have lots of different groups of Christians all over the world. So the Eastern Syriacs uh, celebrate on the first Friday after Resurrection Sunday, and they do this because all departed faithful are saved by the blood of Jesus and they resurrected with Christ. Normally in East Syriac liturgy, the departed souls are remembered on Friday. Church celebrates All Souls Day on Friday before the beginning of Great Lent or Great Fast. And that is the history of All Saints Day in the Eastern Christian traditions. And of course, this is, isn't an exhaustive history because there's so many different Eastern Eastern Christian traditions that there really is no way to go over them all in one short video, but this is just a quick glance. But in short, uh, the Byzantine Christians were celebrating uh, All Saints Day, the Sunday after Pentecost, from about the year 400. And we have homilies by John Chrysostom in the late 4th and early 5th century talking about this first Sunday after Pentecost in Constantinople. And then it got greater prominence in the 9th century when the Byzantine emperor, you know, dedicated a, um, a church to all saints, which he wanted to dedicate it to his wife, but instead he dedicated it to all saints. And then, of course, we also have in Lebanon with we have the Maronites who are celebrating it on November 1st as well. But that isn't their tradition. Their tradition honors the saints 
on three Saturdays in preparation for Lent. And in the East Syriac tradition, we have them celebrating it on the first Friday after Resurrection Sunday. And that is All Saints Day from the Eastern tradition of Christianity in a nutshell. Thanks for learning with us and make sure to check out the video on the Western tradition and the Western history of All Saints Day and the, you know, overall introduction to All Saints Day. And we have two other lessons on those topics. And then we have the overarching Holy Days of Obligation topic that, of course, all these lessons are going to fall under. So please check all those out if you haven't already. And until next time, may God bless you forever and ever.